Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're back on the test server. Thank you to Raid for letting us have a kind of little sneak peek here. I'm going to go through the new epics that are going to be part of this fusion. Uh, I've already spoken about the fusion. I will kind of go over them at the end of this video again. But my initial view of the, the current fusion that's coming up this week is he feels bang average. So I'm hoping that some of these epics are going to kind of, you know, spice up the whole event. And hopefully, um, yeah, there'll be a few in here which are worth having a look at for the kind of mainstay players. Um, it's going to be like a fragment um, event to collect the epics. And then you put those epics into the main fusion. So these historically have been really hard. We don't have the detail of it yet, but they tend to be along the lines of if you miss anything, you're stuffed. <laughs> so we will see what happens when the event drops. But let's go through it then. So sc Scabrius. Scabbers, I guess. Um, straight from Harry Potter. Scabbers with a few uh, extra tails coming out of his back. Damn, that's actually pretty gross. That's actually pretty gross. Oh, I see. You've got the faces coming out there. Oh, man, that's disgusting. Okay. Scabbers gone bad. Here we go. What's going on? So, okay. Okay, base stats. Nothing special. Just kind of like bang average base stats. He is a magic affinity skinwalker. So we've got a poison on the A1. 50% um, goes up to 70% chance to land. Only lands one poison though on an A1. It's okay. It's not It's not bad. 70% chance to land it is pretty good. But one poison for two turns. Um, A2 is an AoE. I don't know any multipliers, anything like that yet. So we're just literally reading out skills here. AoE ability uh, can book to 100% chance to put an AoE leech out. Three turn cooldown. That's pretty nice. Leech is kind of the best way initially to start getting rid of life still gear. So he could come in with both those abilities so far. It's pretty useful for clan boss, um, healing and poison. Plus general content and AoE leech is nice. And then we've got an A3, books to four turn cooldown, um, books to 100% chance of placing a weaken, and also puts increased attack on himself if weaken is placed. It's nice, it's okay. Um, single target stuff and then we've got a passive damage increases by 20% when attacking enemies under poison so if you put him with an aoe poison like a taurus or you know someone of that ilk then he's just going to straight up do more damage 20% is quite a lot actually a lot more damage so i'd be interested to see what this a2 does when poison is out there but it feels like an okay kind of carry style champion with a bit of damage behind him providing he's got good multipliers so not too bad. Not too bad. Um, right. Duh. <laughs> Duh, the demon spawn. Wow, look at this dude. I think it's a dude. Could be either. I, I don't want to try and judge at this point. Carrying mini fellas <laughs> on his belt. Um, actually, I think, it's, I think this is meant to be female. I actually think it's meant to be from like you know the evil warlocky type thing from little mermaid are you getting that vibe kind of stolen the um <laughs> the fork of atlantis or whatever it was i don't know i don't know the story but do you know what i'm saying here kind of got that vibe about it anyway dur the hungerer actually a pretty cool looking skin again what we got here then a1 place a stun 40 percent if you book it it's not a bad a1 it's okay Good base speed, okay base stats. Everything's scaling from attack in terms of damage. In fact, there's only one ability that does damage, so you probably wouldn't build her for damage at all. Um, A2 then, place reflect buff on all allies for two turns. It's okay. Reflect buff is really only good if you've got either a crazy passive going on like Brogny or if you're fighting Finite. Other than that, reflect damage really does very little. Unless you're facing someone with reflect damage in wave content and it's the enemy, then it hurts like hell. But generally, it doesn't do a lot if it's on your team. 15% uh, chance, sorry, 15% continuous heal on all allies as well. Then heals all allies by 15% of their max HP. So those two parts of this skill are actually pretty nice. 15% of your max HP heal, um, free turn cooldown, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, we then got what? Four turn cooldown if booked. A3. Revive two random allies with 50% HP and fills their turn meter 
faction crypt aura as well it's pretty much a straight up faction crypt champion any other epics that have got revives going on here um don't think there are don't think so there's not much going on in terms of revives here so yeah in, in this faction if you don't have duchess then you're kind of struggling for revives so probably a much needed epic for this faction i know you guys are going to post below and say no you missed this one that's got revive but i can't see anyone there that's got revive that i can think of so maybe i kind of bit or someone but anyway i think that'll be a decent um addition to demon spawn to help you through faction was a bit like her forest was when uh, we got the hippo so night rev sent what's going on here talisa talicia um This is an interesting night rev. This is a funky old looking night rev. Tattoos certainly um, in interesting places. The face is not very friendly. Massive old sword. This is a weird one for me. Uh, right, what we got going on then? Uh, force affinity night rev. Attacks one enemy, 50%. Books up to 70 chance of of a debuff spread that's actually pretty cool taking one random debuff from the target and place it place it on all enemies under hex okay not so good um not so good hex is such a rare ability in the game and the champions that deliver hex at the moment are very squishy so they're, they're quite hard to fit into teams um and they're also really hard to get so we've got an a2 aoe hit three turn cooldown um Increases the duration of all debuffs on all enemies by a turn. Okay, that's okay. Uh, another AoE on our A3. Um, places increased defense buff for two turns. This is interesting. So attacks all enemies, places decreased defense buff for two turns. There's, I think there's only two other champions in the whole game that don't need books to make a decreased defense work 100%. So this is actually really great because all you get here is you get more damage and you get a cooldown, but you don't have to put books into her to make her decreased defense work on 100% of enemies. Obviously you've got um, affinity issues going on, but that's actually really strong. That's actually really good. Um, and then we've got a passive when attacking enemies under decreased defense. So she's going to decrease defense when attacking them has a 50% chance of placing the hex for two turns. So she can... Put the drop defense on she can extend it by a turn with an aoe which has also got a chance of placing hex and then when she's a1 in she can debuff spread 50 percent chance of placing debuff uh, spread effect taking one random debuff from the target and place it on all enemies under hex i like the synergy of the kit it's simple it's effective if she hits hard as well i think this is actually going to be a really strong epic or a, a really strong like mid game um account epic so i actually think decent decent force epic there um what else we got a dwarf so this is the void champion um dimitha dimitha looking very serious again look at this damn got this kind of emerald look again so a lot of the dwarves have got this kind of emerald look maybe she messed up samar um high hp high defense supportive champion 102 speed all good stats actually all good stats so what we've got going on tax one enemy two times tons of books here look at this eight books what else we got 8 13 14 15 okay it slows down a bit but damn that's a lot of books there so let's go through the skills then what we've got here um attacks an enemy two times places a shield buff for two turns equal to 10 percent of this champion's max hp on the ally with the lowest hp so double hits kind of nice to always have at least a double hit so it can help with stuff like finite um shield buff for two turns on one ally that's okay it's not bad a1 uh, it's for 10 percent of this champion's max hp which means that you can control it better than if it was the ally's max hp so you might be able to pump up a decent enough shield but it won't be massive it'll probably be something like four to five k uh, right a2 then books to a three turn cooldown I like stuff that books to three turn cooldowns. It tends to mean that they can sink into clan boss kind of setups easier. Um, increases the duration of all ally buffs by a turn, then decreases the duration of, of 
all ally debuffs by one turn. Wow. Okay, that's cool. That is cool. So, again, this is a nice kind of clan boss setup if you're trying to go for something like an infinity shield uh, type setup or generally just generally good for clan boss or kind of protection. So, I like this. Also, heals all allies by 2.5% of their max HP. Heals by a further 2.5% for each turn added to or removed from the duration of buffs and debuffs by this skill. So you could, let's say everyone's got uh, one buff. Yeah, so that's an extra, what, 12.5%. And let's say they've got one debuff as well. That would be like an extra 25% heal. Wow. And if you scale it up even more than that, if everyone had a couple of buffs and a couple of debuffs, that would be insane. Um, that heal could be mammoth right there. So that's nice. Uh, certainly if you're doing like a clan boss setup and you're trying to get yourself, you've normally got two or three buffs running all the time. This could end up being a really juicy three turn heal. Okay. Uh, and then she's got an A3 then places block damage buff on all allies for one turn. I am shocked that they've done this. Totally shocked. It's been so long since we've had another champion with a full team block damage buff. Yeah, if you think about it, you could count the, the kind of unkillable champions and the block damage champions that protect the whole team on one hand. They have not done this for a long time. And why is it so good or so extreme? It's because these are the style of champions that create unkillable teams. Yeah? Your Man Eaters, your Roshkar the Tower, your Sir Nyx, your... Um, Warcaster, yeah, all of these uh, people that put block damage on the whole team on a relatively decent cooldown absolutely get speed tuned for these kind of um, unkillable teams. So she is going to be like one of the best champions you could get for this fusion for that. If you don't have a, an unkillable team yet, this is massive. Three turn cooldown block damage is huge. Uh, you don't even need the continuous heals if you're going for this. So... Damn. Also, this is great for um, Bommel. So basically, when the bombs are about to explode, you pop your block damage buff as long as he's not about to steal the buffs. And on a three turn cooldown, this will be, will be massive there as well. Potentially someone even that could solo Bommel. But if not, definitely someone that could step in a bit like Roshkar the Tower does now and protect a team at the right time when those bombs are about to pop. So, damn, that's actually a huge epic right there. Defense in all battles as well is okay. It's quite a low percentage, actually, for defense in all battles. But, damn, that is a champion right there with loads of support, utility. So, if we then compare, you know, we've got four champions coming in. I'd say two of which were pretty solid. Compare it to the legendary, Sigmund. Sigmund's got good base stats across the board. Um, he's got this kind of shield removal A1. Uh, which is okay. He's got an AoE provoke on his A2. Double hitter. It's not that hard in terms of the multipliers I've seen so far. Um, chance to place decrease attack as well. He's got a shield buff on all allies equal to 30% of his health and a strengthen. This is actually a nice A3 in fairness. But I don't like the rest of his kit that much. And then whenever this champion is attacked, 20% chance of decreasing duration of all buffs. More percentage chance to do it to a boss, but... It's very rare that bosses have buffs. I don't know. I'm I'm steering towards epics. I'm not that fussed about Sigmund. Um, but I do like the look of that dwarf. Especially when I do this, I kind of consider it on my free-to-play nowadays because my main account can kind of just get by um, blowing everything up. But this dwarf on my free-to-play, 100% I would like to get her. Hopefully she's not hidden behind a bunch of shard stuff. Um... The revive champion on my free to play would be awesome as well to help me through faction wars. And yeah, the other two kind of depends on damage and bits. But there you go, guys. New champions coming through. I guess comment below where, which ones would you like to see a guide on first? I have access to the test server for a few days. So kind of you tell me who do you want to see in action and I'll do my best. I've been Hell Hades. I will see you later.